Welcome to another Mech 1000 video. In this video I'm going to introduce you to 3D modeling in AutoCAD. Now before I begin I have to admit I'm not a huge fan of the 3D modeling capability of AutoCAD. I um, have worked with many other 3D modeling software packages that I think work a lot better. Inventor being one of them, another Autodesk product. But if you're um, in a, if you have a small firm that does mostly 2D modeling and you only do a little bit of 3D every once in a while, uh, AutoCAD does have that feature built in. So you don't have to go out and buy a completely separate program just for the 3D modeling. So to start 3D modeling with CAD, the first thing we want to do is change our workspace. So there should be an icon in your bottom right row here that looks like a gear. And we're going to click on that. And there are two 3D modeling uh, workspaces to choose from, and I recommend 3D Basics. We are just going to do some basic introductory stuff um, with 3D, and I think uh, this ribbon layout has simpler um, commands, fewer options, and just makes more sense for what we are going to do. So. The first thing I would recommend doing in uh, the 3D environment is changing the visual style from the 2D wireframe, which works okay but is not my personal favorite, and changing that to um, one of the other options here, like Shades of Grey, I think works pretty well. It gives um, the, your 3D objects a more solid appearance, so I'll demonstrate that here in just a moment. Uh, the other thing you may have played around with earlier in the semester, we haven't really needed to use it up until now, is the view cube. And so this uh, clicking on this cube will allow us to switch to an isometric view, if you click in the corner, or an orthographic view like the front or the right side. And so I like to use this a lot to switch back and forth between different views. You can um, orbit and um, pan, and I'll show you how to do that here in a little bit after I get actually something drawn in my 3D space. But I personally like using the view cube better than, for instance, this wheel um, is another way you can navigate the, the space. So. A lot of what we're going to do in terms of 3D modeling can be done with this box command. And if you click the pull down menu below it, you can see that it's more than just a simple box. You can do boxes, cylinders, cones, spheres, pyramids, wedges, toruses, and polysolids. But let's start off with a simple box. You can still use a lot of the same tools we've been using in a lot of the same settings like snap mode. We can turn on snap mode and when drawing a box it's a lot like drawing a rectangle except there will be a third option to give it height. So you click one corner, you click the other corner to make the rectangle and then you can drag your cursor up and click a third time to give it that 3D appearance or 3D height. So again I like to use the view cube to orbit around to view my 3D models from different angles. You can, if you hold down the shift button and then pan by clicking the wheel on your mouse, you can pan around and, and view it from different options. But I think a lot of times the view cube's the simplest way to go. And this is what it looks like in the shades of gray. The 2D wireframe, it just looks like this. You only see the edges. You don't see any of those solid surfaces. And I think this can get a little confusing if all you're seeing are lines. I like to be able to see the surfaces as well. So let's make a few more shapes using uh, the other commands here located under the box command. We can make cylinders. Again, this is going to start off like a circle. Click the center, radius, and then specify height. Cones work in a similar way. You choose a center, radius, and height. We can 
make spheres, just like a circle, center and radius. We can make pyramids that have rectangular base. And then give it height. If we wanted to make a pyramid with a different number of sides, we can select sides and change it. Maybe we want a hexagonal base. We can make wedges. Starts off like a rectangle and then we give it height on just one side. A torus is basically like a donut shape. So we choose a center, we choose a radius, and then we choose the radius of the torus itself. And finally, polysolids. Polysolids would be good if you were maybe doing an architectural 3D model and you wanted to create walls. So those are all the basic 3D shapes that we can make. Now you'll notice all of these 3D shapes started off with a, well I should say most of them start off with a 2D shape that is drawn on the XY plane. You can see here, here's my origin, the x-axis, and the y-axis. So what if we want to draw a 3D shape that doesn't start on that x-y plane? Well, if we have an existing 3D shape in our drawing already, we can make a 3D shape on top of another one. So in other words, I can select the top surface of this cylinder and I can make a box on top of it. I can make a box on the side of this box. Or I can always make something and then move it. So for instance this pyramid I made that started off on the XY plane, I can select the move command and I can move it up in the Z axis some amount. Okay, so that's the basics of making shapes. Now, let's look at union and subtract. These are going to be two key commands here. So, I have this cylinder. If I click on it, it's just one object. It's just the cylinder. It gets highlighted. If I click on this box, it only highlights the box. These are two separate objects. But if I highlight both of them and then I union them together, now if I, oh, I don't think I did that correctly, I select the two, I union. Actually, it looks like it's forcing me to choose union first, then choose the object. So I guess I can't highlight them first. So I select union, I select the two objects, enter. And now if I select one, I select both of them. They are now the same object. So that can be somewhat useful. Let me show you by making a cylinder on top of this box and then dragging it down so that the cylinder goes all the way through the box. I can show you how to subtract. First you select what you want to subtract from, like the box, finish your selection with a right click or enter, and then choose what you want to subtract from it. So I'm going to subtract this cylinder shape from the box. And that leaves behind a void space where that cylinder used to be. So that's how we make holes in a 3D CAD model. We uh, create a cylinder that is the shape of the hole we want to have, and then we subtract it from the existing geometry. So that's the basics of 3D modeling. Um, I believe you'll find that you can create a lot of shapes uh, and complete a lot of drawings using just these basic 3D shapes, like boxes, cylinders, and so on. 
and then joining them together with the union command or removing geometry from an existing shape using the subtract command.